Ugh. I don't know if this is gonna work. Average everyday uh, portable oscilloscope. Oh, freaking crap! Oh. Whoa, yeah. Oh. And that's just half of it. There's the other half. Right there. Oh my gosh. It's ridiculous. What's up everybody? My name's Russ with RWGResearch.com and this video is about that giant oscilloscope right there. So if you haven't seen part one, we dig into all this fun stuff. It's actually some pretty cool stuff in there. Now we're going to dig into this oscilloscope. We're going to try to power it up. We're going to see if it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. We're going to take it apart anyway. I'm probably not going to fully tear this down. I'm probably going to open up all the panels so you can see what's going on. These are custom built Los Alamos lab uh, pieces of equipment. So this is a laser diagnostics equipment. Uh, this one was P4 apparently. 50 ohms input which is uh, uh, I'll show you later on the back. And this down here, I believe, was just for the camera. Um, so there is a housing right here that you attach a camera to. You can see it's a C27 camera bezel for Tektronix 500 series oscilloscopes. And you put a camera on here, and they used to trigger the camera through this box, uh, I'm pretty sure. And then at the exact same time. So this was part of a pa pulsed plasma physics laboratory. So as soon as the pulse came through and they want to trigger and they want to see what happened, they can capture that via the photograph. There was no digital at this day and age. This is a fully analog beast as far as I know. I haven't taken it apart yet though. Anyway, they got P4 mounted here and here it must match. I'm not real sure. And that is the power supply. This thing is a beast. Again, from Nas uh, Los Alamos National Laboratories, serial number 4006. They probably started to 4, so this is probably number 6. Um, this is a model 1776 MCP unitized power supply. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this particular power supply is actually designed to run two of these units, but there were some that David had that actually was designed to run just one. So... Yeah, first thing we're going to do is look at the back side of this beast and look at the power supply a little closer. Wow. Alright, so first thing is, is it says uh, it's got some issue, you can read that yourself. And let's look at the back. So the back we've got our vertical inputs. These two are blank. We've only got one input, horizontal and vertical and it's on the low side. I'm not sure what this jumper is. I have another one here. Um, so you've got the gate input and the gate input and gate output. This goes for the camera control like I said. Uh, vertical output, vertical input. These are actually um, dummy loads. So these are... Uh, do they say on there? They do say on there. Micro lab slash FXR TA-F42. So those are dummy loads for the output because I think all this 50 ohm out output so they may damage something if you do it wrong. Um, so there's another pin connector I don't know. You've got MCP intensifier marker number one and marker number two. And then you've got CRT out. This is again the camera control. So <laughs> US government tab right there. Look at that, Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory. That's pretty cool. AC camera control, camera control, camera control on sweep, out, uh, lockout, 5 volt trigger, or trigger 5 volt max, to marker signal, CRT sweep output, and the power probably here. Um, so there's two things here. There's 
some stuff on the bottom side. We got the count sweep on off, count sweep power on off, trigger, delay, delay long short, and then oh let's turn this big old giant heavy thing. And then on this side we've got uh, some more of the same similar stuff. That's REP rate, one microsecond to one sixteen milliseconds. Scope lockout after sweeps, microseconds before sweep on, sweep rate. So there's nothing else on the top, but there is a, quite a bit of stuff on the side of the camera control unit. Um, this thing is so heavy, it's incredible. Now, the front here, we've got camera control, beam rot excuse me, beam rotation, focus, intensity, scale, horizontal, vertical, a uh, astigmatism, uh, which is actually um, uh, the beam alignment, like I believe. DC offset, and there is a power light down here. And really, that's it. There isn't an input on the front of this thing. It's actually on the back side, which is kind of crazy. This thing is huge, rack mount beast. Um, so you've got single shot, free run, camera main, camera on, sweep, camera off, lock out, camera reset, sweep step. Uh, maybe a power indicator here. Trigger delay, sweep time. So, yeah. This is actually model 1776. This is a model 1776. Uh, and this is an SL1-2, but it doesn't actually, doesn't actually have. So this might just be for, I don't know, camera control only? I don't know. Let's go ahead and pull the power supply out and we'll look at the back side of it. Set it on the front so we can have a better look at the back. Okay, well there it is. You can see some goodies inside there. Danger, high voltage. It's a bit rusty. Uh, what is that? Odd number and buyer. So sold maybe. I don't know. Got a 110 220 input, 10 amps, 220 or uh, 15 amps, 125. I actually don't know what this is wired to, and I'm not even sure if I can power it up. So you've got a power plug here, and a power plug here, and a small plug here. Looks like there's some stuff in that one hole. I may need to poke at that. So yeah, this thing's pretty rough. It's got some. Uh, Serious uh, capacitors in it and stuff. That's the bottom. You can see the rubber feeder about shot. That one's gone up there. Huge heat sink on the back. Oh, some wiring. I mean, this stuff was, you gotta remember, this stuff was completely custom built for Los Alamos for a particular project. I don't think they built it there. There's a US government sticker again. I don't think they built them there. They probably had somebody build them for them, but they may have designed them or something. I don't know. So the cables I have do have two of these and a single one of these. So if we look oh, at the back of this guy again, this thing is so heavy. You've got a power here and a power here and a single one of these. So apparently this unit, this single unit is actually for these two. And that's it. That's a huge, this is not your everyday portable oscilloscope, let me tell you, boys and girls. No. So briefly, let's go ahead and uh, let's take some uh, some covers off of this and see if we can determine what voltage input it needs. Because if it needs 220, I'm not going to be able to power it up today. Let's see. All right, I got all except for the one screw out. This one stripped on me, so we'll just turn this bad boy for now. We can still see what's going on. Let's take a look. So it looks like we've got some. Uh, high voltage power supplies transformers capacitors control transformers capacitors looks like uh 
two bridge rectifiers here, which may mean it might be 220, two phase or uh, single phase 220, I should say. Hmm, that's an indicator. Um, got some other little breakout boards, more transformers. Got a fuse, power light, and a power switch. Um, so 6,000 volts. Uh, let's see if we can get a better. See if we can get a better shot of this. Ah, uh, so these are uh, mm, high voltage output. Four to sixteen kilovolts positive, and it's got twenty-eight volt input and a ground. Twenty-eight in, four to sixteen kilovolt positive out. That's some serious, serious stuff. These are set to six thousand according to the tags on top. Huh. All right. Well, we can't see a whole lot from up here. There's a few power transistors in the back, and the outlet plugs, and the inlet plug, I guess. So I guess what we'll do is, uh, I don't know what's in this cover, and it appears in order to get it off, I have to get to some screws down in there. That's not coming off right now. Hmm, spiders. Okay, let's pop the bottom off and see what's on the bottom. Alright, so this is actually the, the bottom, and uh, there's not a whole lot down here. Can't see much else. It looks like that aluminum box was right here, and there are two capacitors here, and a breakout board of some kind. Looks like there's some, uh, I don't know what these are, little voltage adjusters? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six potentiometers for some sort of a, maybe a voltage output adjustment. Transformers don't really have much, they're just signal transformers. Looks like the wiring's on the other side and I can't see what they are. Uh, yeah, let's see, these are 35 volt amp. That says 1500 volt RMS. Uh, this side says uh, primary 116 volts. And... It says 50-60-CT. There's only two out. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well I'm going to look around for a little bit and see if I can uh, see if I can determine what voltage this thing is, but the bridge rectifier sort of gave it away. It's probably 220 single phase. And look at this little circuit board. It's just sort of strapped on there. Looks like there's some power Transistors or something in there. Okay, well let's have a let's have a little bit better look uh, with my eyes off camera and see if I can figure out what voltage this is. Well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Good news is our secondary pin right here goes right to the case. This is neutral. This is hot. Probably going to be 110 volts. Not sure why they put that plug on there, but I do not suspect it being single like a single input 220 like that. Uh, it's probably 120. So I went ahead and took the fuse out and bada boom bada bing. Yes indeed this is a 4 amp 120 volt fuse. The bad news is the fuse holders broke off right there. It's hard to see but it's broke off. See that? And that's a bit of an that's a bit of an issue. I do want to put the fuse in it but um, um yeah, I'm going to have to fix that. Well, come on, guys. I didn't say I had to fix it properly. I just said I had to fix it. I think that'll do for now. So, it says do not operate without oscilloscope connected. Apparently, it will self-destruct. Hopefully, someone else didn't do that already. And let's look at the oscilloscope. See what's going on there. Ah, it's time for the big unrevealing of what's inside this giant aluminum box. Are you guys ready? Ready? Da 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 da! More aluminum boxing! <laughs> Check it out! Okay. So, actually, let's see, is there a schematic on here? Nah, just a sheet of aluminum. Darn. Alright, so we've got vertical, horizontal, geometry, levels, invertings, balances. 
And intensity, DE mag lens shield, that one's blank. Stagmentor. Um, and MPC, P, I don't even know, I'm right now I'm not sure what the MCP stands for. Horizontal bowding, so. Uh, looks like there's just some direct input, so this is going to the back of the, uh, back of the, um, CRT. There's a bunch of cable blocks here. I don't know if that goes into the bottom or not. Hmm. Look at these guys all glued up going, they, they might go through the bottom, actually, now that I look at it. These look like they do. I don't know where they go. Might be more goodies in here. So, some big uh, coaxial cables. So let's go ahead and take some more shielding off. I don't even know what I was filming right there. I was looking at what I was looking at. And not actually showing you what's going on. <laughs> so let's see what the other side looks like. Alright, I decided to take the top off first. Okay. The top first. You ready? You ready for the big reveal? More aluminum boxes. What? No. Looks like there's some taping on that guy. Look at that. Some really nice double potentiometers on everything. And just more aluminum boxing. So yeah, okay. Let's uh let's take the other panel off since there's not much going on. Oh, you ready for the big reveal? Da 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 da! More aluminum! Wow, an actual circuit board. This is the best. The oh, the best. I mean, the best I've ever seen. Something shielded. That's incredible. So it looks like we've got a small circuit board that is connected to. Mm, these, the gate input and output. So here's the gate, the gating. I do not think I'm going to be getting inside that today. So here you go, setup voltages. Stigmenter is negative one volt. Uh, DMAG lens has nothing on it and it was blank on the other side. The shields D1, D2, actually those are the ones that were blank. Horizontal bowding. Some of these terms I'm actually not familiar with. Stagmenter, actually, yeah. 1684, look at that weird number. 1684 volts. Top and bottom vertical, negative 2060, negative 2010, negative 2065, negative 8 and 8, and then positive 8. Incredible. Catalog number. So it is, look at there, it's a Tektronix. It's a T710P20. So you can look it up. And it's got an 8-028 written on it. Hmm. Look at these inputs. Coaxial inputs. All the way around this guy. That's really interesting. That one's not that tight. That one's actually quite loose. Maybe someone may have been working on it. It's hard to tell. So yeah, that's what's inside of here. Everything's cased inside of the uh, inside of the tube here. There's surely some electrical in there, but you know what? To be honest, it may be all uh, all pure magnetics. It's an analog oscilloscope, you know. There is this strange tube here. Uh, no, that's a coaxial cable. That might be a high voltage input or something. Very interesting. Okay, well let's look into the bottom. Let's just pop the bottom apart. I it appears that this whole this whole aluminum panel will not come off. So I can't get into here. But let's see, can we find out where the electronics go in? Let's go into horizontal in horizontal alignments. Okay. And this side is going to vertical top and vertical BTM. This connector is actually going into the bottom. There might be some electronics in this panel. Look how these are bolted together. That's some crazy. Um, I don't see myself getting that apart. Look at these solid, solid aluminum built machined rails. All these holes tapped in all directions. Maybe that's so you can just 
flip them any which way and they fit, I don't know. It's very possible. Could be just for a different design. Huh. Well, mm, there's screws in the back, so without taking all this stuff apart, I'm not going to be able to get these out. Bummer. Oh, come on, guys. I'm not going to let you hang. I'm going to show you what's in here, but... Spoiler alert. You're going to be really disappointed. You ready? That's it. It's an empty aluminum box for nothing but shielding. Those look to be like ferrite cores. So that all has to do with uh, how this thing is tuned, I, I assume. Or it could be protection, actually, because this is a pulse plasma instrument. And uh, tuning could be part of the process. I'm not even going to open the other one. Yeah, you're welcome. That was a lot of work. Let's put it back together. Well, that's one way to mount components. <laughs> eh, three diodes in a capacitor, and it's just glued onto the backside of the potentiometers. That's going to be a challenge to replace one if you need to. Anyway, so uh, it looks like this is a stainless steel material all the way to the back. And uh, this is going to be hard with the bad lighting, but look at that TIG weld. So that thing is micro TIG welded all the way around. That's impressive. That's a good looking weld right there, let me tell you. I'm sure it was automated, but man, back in the 1980s, that's a really good weld. So I'm sure there's a way to take this off the front and pull this whole thing out and take it apart. But uh, I don't think I'm going to do that today. Let's go ahead and look in the bottom and see what's in the camera control. Ah, uh, you guys ready for the big reveal? <laughs> what do you think? More aluminum boxes? <gasps> oh, wow! Actual electronics! Wow, I'm so surprised! Shouldn't be, should I? Guess I... Guess I should be. Anyway... Wow, look at that. Completely... Tinned circuit boards. Bunch of logic chips in there. I see some uh, uh, 74 8 ins, 74 196s, eh, you know, the normal logic stuff. There's a 7400. There's your potentiometers on the side there. This looks like a, uh, a sweep board, sweep generation board, it says on there. Look at that. Wow. That is a complete custom circuit board. Just soldered right onto the top of a, a board. What the heck is going on with that board? Look at that. It's just soldered on there. Like, everything soldered into one spot. I wonder if that's conductive. What the heck is going on? That must be a a coat. I don't know. I don't know what's going on right there. All those components are just soldered onto the top of that board. And these look like uh, some pretty thick... Uh, mm, are those insulative boards? They almost look like copper, but they might be insulative boards. I don't know. Heat sink boards? They almost have to be insulative boards. These look like through-hole through components, so this is probably a double-sided board. Look at that. Generic solid state relay. Mm, AC output, DC input. Some uh, <laughs> stepped down. Uh, look at those little guys just in a nice order. That's fun. Oh, that's going to the seven segment display driver. Yep. It's a DM7474. I believe that's a seven segment display driver. Double potentiometers on that guy. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty nice wiring. It's done well. It's done really well. Not much else in there. I mean, there's not much to look at, but what is going on? What is going on with this circuit? Look at this! Look at this connector just soldered into it. That board—that's that, worth a couple of pictures right there. 
I have no idea what's going on. If you guys know in the comments, let me know. That's bizarre. I'm sure that's tinned right there. It's all just like, everything is tinned to ground, if you look at it. That has to be a, a painted coating of some kind. Let's see what's conductive. Alright guys, so I've done the continuity check, and if you look really close, uh, so like for instance, right on this pen, right there you can see a little pad sticking up. So some of these are actually on pads. There are pads there. It's like the whole base is soldered and then there's a break and then a, and then like a pad. You can see the pads. They're hard to see, but they're there. But most of the pieces are connected straight to the ground. But there you can see those pads on that guy. Just bizarre. I've never seen a circuit built like that in my life. Really crazy stuff. Look at all the jumpers. Look at all the jumpers on that guy. I bet that's a single-sided board. What do you think? Looks like nothing's through hole. Everything is just everything is just soldered right onto the top and then onto a pad. You know, a breaking point there and everything's soldered on the top. Nothing on this looks through hole. Well, except for that. They cut the whole bottom out. <laughs> but look at those little jumpers everywhere. Now that one is a through hole, so interesting stuff. This is look, there's another one of the circuits and here you can see the here you can see those little pads I've never seen those although I haven't taken apart a bunch of old equipment either like this all right well I'm not gonna tear much more down let's go ahead and uh, see what's next all right as you can see I've taken the camera housing off looks like you just pop it in there and clip it shut and the camera is encased in darkness and here's these giant studs. These have uh, fittings on them. It looks like you could unthread these. I'm going to go ahead and try loosening all of these other screws. And uh, oh, look at there, that looks like an IR input. Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out. I just want to see if I can even get this off. Because if I can get this off and there's something to see, potentially we might be able to see through there. I don't see any good way of getting this unit, once you get it apart bolted here you can slide the whole thing out I'm sure but I don't think you're gonna be able to get inside that case I don't know what else there is to see it's just a bunch of electromagnetic coils really fancy ones I'm sure alright so these apparently only hold this whole thing in place it's kinda of hard to see but the whole thing is moving so the only thing holding it in here now is just these two bolts. And uh, to be honest, if I pull this out, I don't see anything good coming out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and try getting on these four and just see if I can pop this off. Uh, I hope it's not a, a bad idea. Let's just see if we can even see in the front at all. Alright, there was a really nice seal on there, but uh, I broke it loose. Check it out. You see those? You see that small hole right there? Look. They've got a tiny little set screw in the corner of each one of these Allen screw. I have no idea if that's just something squareness or what's going on, but uh, yeah, it's just a nice big giant aluminum plate. Look at these bolts. That's some serious machine work just to put a darn oscilloscope together. And this one's actually pretty simple. Alright, so I've already pulled this away a little bit. Let's just go ahead and pull it out the rest of the way. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's set that up here to have ourselves a little look. So it looks like there are four, three little indicating lights or something. Heat, I don't know. I have no idea what these are. And they're connected uh, in parallel. I'm sorry, in series. Hmm, not quite sure what they are. Alright, well let's get a flashlight. We'll shine it in there, but yeah, there ain't much going on in there. Just a bunch of whole bunch of high voltage stuff. And I'm just gonna use my phone flashlight. Boop. So there you go. There's what's going on inside of there. High voltage input there. Bunch of other little things and some coils and stuff. Not a whole lot. 
probably not even worth taking apart, but hey, you know what? I tried. I tried. I don't have no idea what these are. These set up against this rubber thing, I mean, what the heck would they be on there for? Nothing's gonna get through that rubber. They're like this, so you've got two and two, they're offset, and one and one. Hmm. Alright, well let's put this together and attempt to power it up. Whoever designed these had a bad idea. The cables are identical. And they're not marked on there. And they're definitely supposed to go to different ones. It has right and left. We're gonna guess it's like this. Alright guys, so we found our standard 120 to funky 120 plug converter. Uh, this converter costs about $3 and you can find it at any local place they sell alligator clips. Ratings? Yeah, don't worry about ratings. Safety? Mm, you know, if it's going to blow up, it's going to be spectacular. Anyway, let's turn this off. Let's try to make sure that nothing shorts out when I plug it in. Mm, what do you think? Eh, I might be able to adjust the ground. You know, the safety on the ground. There we go. It's always supposed to be longer than the other two, and they do that so if you rip the cord out, the only thing left is the ground. See? No, I'm not kidding. Okay, we'll even plug it into the safety splitter into the glued outlet. <sighs> okay, moment of truth. To be totally honest, if this turns on, the only thing I expect to see is a power light, maybe a sweep step indicator at zero, and a power light. Alright, I'm going to set the camera down, because again, if it blows up, I want it to be spectacular. I'm going to stand back. You ready? Hmm. Let's just check that real quick. Alright, boys and girls, we have our uh, motorcycle noises in the background. We have our safety uh, converter here. So you always want to use red on your safety converter. Uh, that's very important. If you don't use red on your safety converter, you have a chance of actually having the wrong polarity. We also have a fuse shield just in case you know, something goes wrong, we still want to have a fuse shield. And uh, these are just extra parts, we don't need them. So, we're all set. Now we know for sure that we make 100% connection safety converter. Let's plug it in and try it again. You ready? Absolutely nothing! See that? It turned on. Making an awfully loud humming noise. I don't know if I like that. We do have a power light.
Oh, fell a beam. It's actually working. Let me show you. All right, don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about that safety uh, safety fuse. It's it's all right. Anyway, there it is. You see the little green dot. I can move the horizontal position and vertical position. We can tune in the focus. We can uh, change the intensity. DC offset uh, isn't doing much. A stigma is doing something. So yeah, you know. And then uh, our power light is on. Our camera lockout light is working. Single shot. Light is flashing. Free run one minute. Camera off. Camera main. Reset. Delay, sweep time. It's another little IR looking LED. Interesting. Alright, this thing is now smoking. So we will turn it off. You can see the smoke coming out of it. I was going to say it smelled bad. And, uh, well, it still smells bad. It smells really bad. So, anyway, yes, indeed, it does actually function. The old Los Alamos, Los Alamos Laboratories laser diagnostic camera control system with all the safeties built in right here. These are the safeties. So, um, yeah, you saw it smoking, and it does smell bad, and I presume that has to do with the transformer volt. I don't know what the heck's going on, but nonetheless... There it is. That's it. I'm probably never going to run it again because that smells awful. And uh, I have no idea. I don't like the way it hummed either. Uh, I'm fairly certain these are plugged into the right way because these actually fit really nicely. And these three uh, I think are fine too. Maybe I'll double check later. But uh, oof. That stinks. That smells really bad. I don't like the smell of that at all. Not one bit do I. Okay. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, now you know. Now you know that this thing actually still sort of functions. Uh, test button. Maybe we should have tried that. Anyway. That's all I got for now. Peace and love. Have a good day. Next time. We're going to dig into that power supply. That is a high voltage output power supply. I'll give you a little sneak peek. Yeah. Poor lighting, bad focus. You get what you get. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you did or didn't. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think the smoke was coming from. And uh, definitely make sure you go find your safeties. Bye. Uh, let's see what it looks like in the dark. Ooh, pretty. Look, there it is. Oh, that sounds terrible. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> oh. Peace and love. Have a good day. God bless. Don't forget to leave a comment. How many times am I going to tell you guys that? See ya. It's pretty dark out here.